Welcome, this is a recorded session of the Post-Quantum Cryptography Conference of the PKI Consortium. This conference would not have been possible without our sponsors in Trust, HID Global, and PQ Shield, and the organizational support of the Post-Quantum Cryptography Working Group of the PKI Consortium, in particular in Trust, Logius, TNO, and CWI. I think I'm gonna, I feel like they say security twice on their main script. CISA, CISA, CISA. So I uh, just named a couple entities, um, and then you have the, the rest of the DOD and the different services that are part of that box over here with DOD. So, so when I talk about other agencies, I have to be careful because they're probably on the street watching and they'll be cranky when I talk about their work, There's which no I'm not part of except for coordination. Um, so that's a primer into what I'm going to be doing today. Um, again, I work at, at NIST NCCOE, which stands for National Cybersecurity Center of Excellence. You can read that. It's the Applied Cybersecurity Center, which I mentioned during uh, the earlier talk. And this timeline is the same one that Dustin showed as he reminded you where NIST stands in leading a process towards standardization. And I, part of what I wanted to point out in here, and I should look here again, because I told you that before, is, is just there have been steps where we've kicked off things. And, and so anytime somebody in oh, the yeah. press writes, oh, they're not doing anything fast enough, we're like, but they started back here. It's very and, and in 2021, we started saying, well, we know these are the, some of the standards being selected. What can we do today? And at the same time, our big executive branch offices of science and technology policy and another new entity called the Office of the National Cybersecurity Director. Uh, they've established uh, with the White House national security memos and, and some other memos that have come out and I'm gonna describe all those for you today. So you have a sense of, of who's dragging or at least pushing on or, or pulling on ropes to get this stuff to happen in the US government. Uh, not the who, but the big agencies and their roles. And, and I gotta turn around and look at this for a second. Yeah, I bored you with this earlier. Um, the project I lead began in the summer of 2021, and we've asked for people to join us. And, and so what we've established is something that I'll show was called out for in, in a couple of the memos. Cool. The cool news is you don't get bonus points for having started it before the memo came. They still ask you then what, how it's going and, and how are you measuring your progress. And in all of this, measuring progress, is, is, as, as ever, is difficult. Um, cybersecurity, if, in general, is hard to measure. We have a lot of numerators and, and not so many denominators to know how well we're doing. So uh, sometimes I'm critical of our work, but I really want to inspire you to talk to me and others here about how do we communicate progress and movements in these spaces, and what's the language we need to use with, with, with folks who aren't mathematicians or physicists or cryptographers or, or, or telecommunication security engineers, any of those roles that, that have a deeper knowledge and are willing to read the long papers that we write. Um, so moving along, um, these are the references I'll be I'll be talking about, and so I put them on the slides so that people who aren't awake will come back and look at these later and know they can get this stuff on their own. They don't need to listen to me. Get out of the way so you can take a quick picture or two of that. And recognize that I've, I've shared my project, Miss PQC. Uh, sorry, Dustin's project at the top. Dustin's project being leading the, the, the process to standardize. New algorithms, um, the project, project we're doing at our Applied Cybersecurity Center, Center is saying what can we start doing first, what can we really want to get people to take a step. And post, there's a, 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 a purpose to all this, makes a lot of people like, I don't need to worry about this until something happens. And, and so a lot of the shift in my own language, and I'll do it badly <coughs> here sometimes, but is quantum readiness. Are you preparing, are your organizations, are your customers, Preparing for quantum readiness, and if you're a manufacturer of equipment, are you are you sharing with them your quantum roadmap towards quantum readiness so that, that they can understand that you, your your technology won't be their their hard challenge and will be elsewhere they need to worry about. Um, NSA is on here. Uh, anybody in the room from NSA? <laughs> I, I worked there until 2010, and, and I didn't know I, I used old KG encryptors to, to make sure that. In the building over here that had all the stuff and the fences around it was plain text, and over here when it went out to the, the telecom, it was, it was cipher text. So I understood cryptography in the, in the terms of, of putting keys into these boxes and making sure the clock data relationships were perfect so that the data would, would go through without errors. Um, that was a fun, cool career that I switched to this because it's closer to my house, and they actually thought I was smart enough to come work there. And then uh, CISA, I'll talk about their, their communication in this space, because they have the lead to establish um, 
security for all of our critical infrastructure. A lot of it's voluntary adoption in the US, not a lot of regulation yet. Um, and so one more thing to add onto your list of all the things that you should do to make your cybersecurity work better for you and your privacy and protections that happen. It, it's, it's a, we're walking into a lot of rooms saying, oh my God, there's this huge problem. You gotta, you gotta start switching your crypto. Well, actually wait until 20, wait till 2024. But then the equipment manufacturers have to wait for the standards, but they're not really waiting, they're building. So we have a lot of messaging challenges in this community uh, because uh, it's hurry up and wait, go now, do something. And earlier in the presentation, I talked about our project doing two work streams. One on, on how do you, what do the discovery tools do and where does it look? I didn't quite say it that way this morning, I'll say it that way now. The discovery, what does discovery let you do? Hopefully it lets you start to figure out what to prioritize focus on first, and then the other aspect is, is the interoperability of the standards that we rely on today and getting ahead of the curve on that. So that's a lot of details from the four URLs that we gave you. So, um, now you're going to love my slides. So time-wise, I'm going to talk about uh, uh, you know, drivers. I can kind of get a brief. All right. In May of 2022, a national security memo. I'll come back to this. This is the very top. And don't worry, we get a picture you'll come back. At the very top, this was the, the U.S. government and the White House saying, you have to worry about this. And, it, and, it, and I focused on the things that, that hit on quantum cryptography. This also focused on, on all aspects of quantum science and the integration of, 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 of let's make sure the U.S. stays preeminent in this, in this arena. And, and it's more than post-quantum cryptography. It is all things quantum, so it includes quantum workforce and, and other aspects. The second driver thought, that was May. Then you get to September, and NSA knowing that NSM 10 had come out. NSA has responsibilities in the US for their for our national security systems, designated systems that have national security data and, and on them. NIST has a responsibility with other parts of the federal government, including CISA, to focus on the non-national security <coughs> parts of the government, the government NIST, NIST for government, I should say. So this is NSA stepping up, and we'll come back to the bullets in a second, although I can't read the leadership. Um, so that was May, September 2022, and then in November last year, coming up on a one-year anniversary, we have this memo, M2302, and it, and it uses the lovely English gerund migrating to post-quantum cryptography, my project migration, other people use the words transition, are those all the same? Maybe, English is a fun language, um, you can kind of hear synonyms in some of those things. And so this memo has some things we have to do, and I'll come back to each of these, uh, dive a little deeper. And then right after that memo, Congress basically took some of the memo at NSM 10 and made a law. So, so now things that were in a memo say also redundantly say do it in law. And, and hopefully laws come with money to each of the agencies that are responsible for this stuff. I, I haven't gone to look for the money yet. Um, and then more recently, this one's kind of lower key uh, because there's a place in the U.S. government called the General Services Administration clever name for it. They do all the hard stuff like get you building leases and, and deal with all the, how many pens you have in the storeroom and kind of you know, have pads and paper. Well, they, they have giant responsibilities for the acquisition of everything and included in everything now is do, do we have technologies that have quantum, post-quantum cryptography inside them. So they self-declared, put out a memo, a request for information, please tell us if you have anything. And we need to start leveraging that and making sure that more vendors know that they should come register. They, they had a close date on that because it was early, like in June or late July, to give us the information. That's your problem. They, they, they're still accepting if you, if you have a product and you didn't hit their first RFI, if you go back and look at that the PDF of the process that you need to engage, they'll engage you and you can get on their list. And I say that because at some, at some meeting, somebody from GSA is going to walk in and say, here's the list of post quantum cryptography technologies. And, and this could be, some people, they threw in their QKDs, they threw in the QRNGs, they threw in anything that had the word Q, letter Q, the word quantum. And so we're going to need to stare at these lists, and, and then colleagues at CISA are going to need to engage industry to say, you need to do something now. And they're already saying that. We're, we're saying it within this as well. We need to communicate what do we want to know about these technologies? What does it mean for somebody to say it's in there? You know, it's not like the Intel Inside sticker yet makes sense to anybody. And maybe even that one didn't, you know, a lot of, a lot of people's mental models. You know, what does it mean that the integration of Wi-Fi and Bluetooth and that chip doesn't you know, but you got to take advantage of that because there's some security stuff in there. Though. But uh, this was kind of the last shot across it with an obvious public way of, of doing stuff. 
besides the activities that I'm going to describe. So, um, I suppose that's finished. Now let's go back and walk through each of these one, one by one, and I'll try to remember why I decided to pick out of long documents these wonderful things for you all to see. Um, pictographic agility, how many times have we exercised the need to replace algorithms in, in networks? Not that often, right? I think, you know, Mike, you guys tell me better. You know, shouldn't use SHA-1 anymore? So how's that transition going? Well, the folks who have, who have discovery tools are discovering SHA-1 is still being run in networks. Well, if it's protecting the dog park, maybe that's okay. Who implemented it for dog park? I don't know, but that's that's the possibility is you're running SHA-1 and it's not really a threat. So great that your discovery tool got it and all that. But crypto agility, like that is a, a, a dream, it's a desire, and some of you have, have mapped out schemes within your technologies to, to support this. There's a lot of language that follows crypto agility. NIST has a, a, a algorithm validation, cryptographic algorithm validation program and a cryptographic module validation program. And since I started leading this project, I've had to learn all these things and what they mean. Those programs need to be ready for the algorithms, so that that's not going to be a big shift in terms of how they test and do things. But they're asking the questions, what are, what will work, and they've even put out an example website recently. But, but crypto agility, if you sell people stuff that can do amazing things, and then somebody from NIST walks in and says, well, we don't have a way to validate that the new algorithm you just swapped out is valid and usable, it's not FIPS compliant, then you might have already stepped past, you know, and you're running the race faster than the people with the cameras who are watching the race and, and didn't notice how well you're doing. So, so there's little bits here that are, that are very complicated. Um, open working group. Uh, I claim that that is the NIST PTC forum, which is a, a Google group of 2,500 people, and sometimes people talk nice in that group and they share great thoughts and then they advance cryptography, and then sometimes they argue in interesting ways and get mad at each other and thank you and then Dustin has to step in and say, can we, can we calm down and be nicer to one another? But that is a, I'm, I'm teasing in the sense that it, it is a, if, you're, if you have a Google account and you log and you register yourself on this forum, you can go back and read two and a half, well, four years, maybe five years, where's Dustin go? Dustin, where are you hiding? Did you sneak out of the room? Where'd you go? Anyway, um, it's, it's, who's on the forum in the room already? Great. If you're not on the forum and you're kind of curious what's happened there and you have a Google account, you can log in and go to groups.google.com, click on it, and see all the old messages, and the search button works great. And you can find out who the really nice people are and who the other nice people are. Um, and and lots, of, lots to learn. I mean, a really a grad class on just let's look at the PQC forum and see how you can learn crypto from this is probably you know, something that one of, the, one of the AI tools can do. Um, all right, moving along. How much time do I have? Six minutes? Five minutes? I should leave time for questions. So. Um, NIST established a quantum post quantum project. That, that, that was me. We're doing that. CISA do stuff. I mentioned that earlier. Um, okay. And then it said do an inventory 90 days after NIST do something. It's like all these, if you try to put the timeline together, some of them don't actually make perfect sense. 90 days after a draft? No, after final. Final will happen when? Dustin said it'll happen maybe this spring for the free first algorithm. So lots of little like get going but wait kind of feelings to this stuff. And then the, 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 this one, uh, NSA put a very aggressive schedule. If you're going to be selling into the national security systems part of our government, please do some of these things, is what they're saying. And then the vendors kind of said, wait, wait, that, that using this special pub 800-208 and stateful-based hash encryption is hard, and we can't, we can't make that match up with what you're asking for. And maybe the answer is don't do that. Wait for the standards to be finalized and use the new standards. But, but they wanted to put a line in the sand, and so I'm not trying to be too critical. They really need digital signatures and, dig and signing of stuff to happen and work. So aggressive, that's good. It's pushing for stuff, but it's making some people cranky. So are we good at, at these are engineers and cryptographers trying to do marketing, perhaps, right? And, and so they are going to update, I've been told, their FAQ page on the CNSA and their post-quantum work in the near future. So you'll be able to hear about that. Good outcome from that. This memo uh, asked a lot of the government. It said, basically, look at your high-value assets and tell us what cryptographic systems are protecting them. And then if they have quantum vulnerable cryptography inside them, please mark it down so you know what you have and we know what you have. And then they kind of said, wait, if we put it all together from all, the, all these federal agencies, FCEB is like the, the big money agencies like Department of Commerce, Department of uh, Defense, you know, but, but for the non-national security part of government, start doing an inventory and give it to us by May. And, and they 
this process, they gave each agency a spreadsheet, and they said, are you the person who could help us? With the, here's the spreadsheet. And, and they trusted that you would ask everybody else in your organization, how would you go about doing an inventory on a piece of paper? How would you go about knowing what crypto's in there? What do you already know? What tools do you have that say anything about the crypto and your systems and the products and the communication protocols you rely on? So that's where the inventory stuff of tools comes in. It's hard to recommend which tool to use yet based on a, a high-level memo that says, you know, you have assets that you care about and give us a, give us an idea of what crypto protects them. The data's moving, so is it, is it the same crypto all along when the data is moving around your network? You guys know this better than me, but we, we gave out these spreadsheets and didn't really figure out how to market that. Like, hey, wait, this sounds like what you're already doing for your zero trust architecture movement. You need to know what data you have to protect for zero trust, so that's your answer. Now can you ask some more questions? Can you borrow that community, that expert community? And so tactics to um, engage our, our continuous monitoring, our diagnostic and monitoring, commu monitoring communities, those were, were not really given out as tactics, they were given out as here's a deadline, and that made cranky people again. So I'm basically describing the whole U.S. process as cranky. No, it's not, but it's, it's hard to get this message out to people who are already busy trying to protect the network and then modernize the network. And then you give them this bigger task, new task, and you say it's more important than your other task. And that's really hard. The prioritization is really hard to express. I don't have the right to walk into your kitchen and say, you need to make this for dinner unless you let me look inside your refrigerator in your pantry. And you're not going to do that for some obvious reasons, especially if you're not part of the government. So it's tricky to say, do this. But it's said, do an inventory. And they, they started that. We're going to learn. We're going to iterate. And I'm hoping as we communicate, we, we get generous with each other and the people who are stuck with making these risk and priority decisions. Um, the idea of testing the standards was listed, and they gave a kind of a marked example of the FedRAMP program, which is a cloud security process of, of uh, companies can register. So I'm um, doing a lot of the job leaving time for questions. I, I will shut up because that, that's kind of it. The idea of asking for funding, how much funding do you need? That's a super weird question when you don't know how much the tools cost, you don't know yet what the tools do, and you don't know where you need to look necessarily. So a lot of weird early, early questions pushing on a lot of people who, if you're hyper, you, you get a little depressed by this, you know, you could be a little stressful. Um, but if you're a visionary, which many of you are, it's like, wow, we're going to finally understand what crypto we have, and we're going to keep track of it better, and we're going to be modern, and when we're done with this, we're going to have so much easier time the next time we need to transition. So do you have any questions about the U.S. processes? Uh, and I hope I didn't sound too negative. I hope I finished with that really cool, positive stuff. So questions? And I'll repeat them out for the audience on the, on the screen, too. And we have this thing. I can, I can touch it. I can gently carry this. Thing. You're not supposed to throw it. People get hurt. The scale of our the scale of our government is so large, and the, and I described the distinctions of different agencies of different roles. It's just there's a lot to communicate, and we're not we didn't write down exactly a playbook. We wrote some big high level things, and now we have to write them asking if I if, if I'm delivering this to you, is it well received? And we didn't we didn't give ourselves time for that. So that's what I that's kind of the recommendation I would have is before you walk in a room and say I've got a problem you need to solve. Say, how can we solve this together? And I think you'll get better, better traction. And we've created the collaborations to meet and, and grow out. And I was just talking to folks who are part of like the telecom GSMA working group. I need to know all the working groups so I can communicate out through that too. But within the government, it was just difficult. I, did, I didn't get to experience that, so I need to catch up on the results. But absolutely, and I, I look forward to the next session so I can learn how the progress is going. Words like hybrid haven't been expressed in much of this. And that's a tricky thing because what are we, where are we hybridizing means something different to different people. So I think it's just a better playbook and, and taking the time to write it. Sorry, we have more time? Nope. Excuse me, we're going to, we're uh, going to continue with the questions from online. Uh, and I'll uh, get back to uh, okay. this yep. audience. Uh, and, and would you give me the, the microphone? I want to play with it. Are we, are we harvesting the questions and decrypting them later or okay. answering them now? No, no, they're unencrypted. I got it. Okay, so uh, we'll continue with questions from the audience uh, present here uh, in a minute. But first, uh, uh, there are some questions from Bill for Bill from uh, the online uh, community, possibly from people in this audience, from myself. So um, let me start, Bill, with uh, one question. Uh, I'll just uh, read it out literally as it came in. It says, what is the latest estimation of global investments required for P2C migration? What is the overall market size of quantum safe migration? I, I have no idea. 
I'll take that question back to the White House and, and ask if anybody, we will have a report, I think, that talks about that first assessment. I don't know that it's publicly going to be shared yet. So we might have an answer. I have not seen it. Yeah, okay. So. Let's, uh, let's, let's now. So we, uh, we'll be waiting for uh, that information. And let's see, here is another, I think it's a bit of a technical question. It says, why are you using classifications that interchange AES and SHA? I, my guess is that it refers to a technical slide from your previous with the five security levels. Yeah, that would come. Dustin Moody will need to answer that, and they can go to the forum and ask that question as well. PCC forum on the NIST PCC page. Please, please do it. People love answers. Good. Have good questions. Yeah. Uh, so one final question. Um, let me see. Uh, oh yeah. Uh, okay. So the question is as follows, Mr. Newhouse. With your projects on data classification, migration oh. <laughs> to post-quantum cryptography, could you explain how machine learning and other initiatives relate to the evolving regulatory framework and their collective impact on the security of critical infrastructure in the context of quantum computing cybersecurity? Yeah, good access? question. I, I can't explain. I can, I can offer tactics. Uh, last week, there was a large announcement about AI and NIST is an asked to create an AI security institute. And the, the other thing is mentioned there, I'm leading a project on data classification. That is getting a handle on your data. Relating all these together uh, is important because we can't ignore the fact that, that, that artificial intelligence machine learning will, is already impacting uh, attacks on crypto. So can we use it for positive too? We, we need to find out. So we don't have the answers yet, but we have groups that we're going to need to communicate with. And, and that's going to be hard because sometimes people like to look where they need to look and not look outside them. But, but we do have a tactic, and because it's, uh, luckily for me, it's happening within NIST, at least for me, I think I know it will happen. We also have a 5G project at our center that I work at, and, and examining aspects of PTC implementation into the telecom 5G environment is super important, and there are people who are doing that already. So it all needs to be, we need to push on each other. So and please keep doing that to NIST and hope for the college email. Thank you. Thank you, Bill. Okay, so I was going to invite questions from the top row, but uh, I think there's a gentleman uh, who's already uh, up to speed. Because the inventory process was done on paper the first year, next May, um, are we ready to tell agencies which, which discovery tool to use to buy to do the next inventory? No. Some of them may, on their own, independently go out and get them. So different, different models will happen. And the agencies that learn first, we need to pull them in to teach others. And so, so the, the prioritization to me is, is inventory, discovery, and, and then the memo, the second priority was sort of funding. That's a whole different part of, that's a different part of the brain of a, of a security organization. And asking for funding that's kind of two years, three years out and forecasting is, is they're not usually in the room watching the networks and knowing which photography you're running. So those are the first two. Um, and, and it's not obvious. If we write a memo and CISA has the responsibility to write a strategy, what tools should you buy? Because right now the strategy is, I haven't learned enough from, from Bill's project and, at this to give any good advice there yet, but we're working on it. And so please be patient and, and, and push on us not to be too patient. But it's hard to walk in and say, we're going to go with this model. You have to meet CDM, which is a set of tools in our networks, because that constrains the tools to match. And, and, and they haven't had an industry day that I'm aware of. So that's maybe priority number three. Have an industry day about what it takes to integrate a new tool into a U.S. government environment. They're not homogeneous in a good way, in a, in a way that will be like one product will work everywhere. So there's going to be some flexibility that we, because we haven't played the games yet. We've basically lined the fields and we know whether we need to get a soccer ball and start playing. But if you can win the game by, by doing counterattacks and you can win the game by doing awesome Dutch football, you know, total football, those tactics we haven't described as showing success enough to each other to, to really come up with a fourth priority. You guys gave me 20 minutes, and I think I'm past that. So yeah. who, who am I killing on the schedule? I think uh, we're going to continue. Can I uh, get my, I cannot steal what is mine. I cannot steal what is mine. Yeah, literally at NIST we had those, and we're not allowed to throw them anymore because the security, the, the safety people said. Yeah, so. but it's, <laughs> Okay, so um, let's uh, let's thank Bill for his uh, great contributions to our session. Thanks, Bill.
In today's complex, fast-paced world, you need a partner who can help secure your digital transformation so you can drive your business forward confidently. Someone who can fine-tune and integrate the secure technologies that enable mobile identities, digital payments, and a hybrid workforce. You need a partner who will have your back so you can stay focused on the road ahead and accelerate your organization's growth. Entrust, securing a world in motion.